Hello again everyone, Coney is here. Today I'm flying from Savannah, Georgia to Charleston, South Carolina. I'm flying a Beechcraft King Air 350i. I've set a flight level of 2,500 feet. Let's go ahead and get started. Take off the parking brake. And here we go. Lift off. Still haven't mastered a perfect smooth straight course down the runway when there's a little bit of wind. Alright, so climb a little bit and then uh, let's put up the landing gear. KH401 continue for east departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Right, and then flaps up. Two nine one clear to land runway one niner. Follow the aircraft on final. One two zero seven at one two. And let's turn into our course. Savannah Tower KH401 continue for east departure. Clear to land runway one niner, sky west five two nine or one. Alright, I've set a flight level of twenty five hundred feet, so let's go ahead and first of all gauge autopilot. A little hard to do two things at the same time. There's autopilot. Yaw damper. Okay, so that will get us on the correct course. And then we want to go up to 2500 feet, so let's turn on flight level change. We're not too far from that, actually. Oh, I didn't actually turn it on. Okay, I guess it's not letting us turn it on because it's not needed because we're already there. Okay, cool. Savannah approach KH four zero one is type Beechcraft King Air five miles northeast of Savannah two thousand three hundred feet. All right, so let's go ahead and go outside and take a look around. Not a great day weather-wise, but at least it's dry. Kind of interesting off in the distance, there's some kind of sunlight peeking through, I guess. Over there. Alright, I'm going to reset <coughs> the external view. Okay, we're going too fast. I wasn't paying attention to my speed, so now we can level off. Pull back on the throttle. Checking on nav, I think we blew off course a little bit or something, but it seems to be okay. See some sun peeking through, that's kind of nice. It's gonna disappear quickly. I kind of love that. Yeah, it's definitely kind of bumpy and windy. See the plane jostling around. We are at proper altitude. We're at good speed. Throttle is approximately at the center detent, which is nice. Trying to take a peek ahead, see what there is to look at over there. In any case, I would like to take the drone out. Okay, 
Yeah, we can focus on, or sorry, not focus, um, follow. We can follow on. That will keep us tethered to the plane. And otherwise, we get the cursor off the screen. Otherwise, we can go ahead and start checking some stuff out. Yeah, it sounds very windy. Um, I wonder if the game animates the trees blowing. I guess it probably wouldn't be able to do that. That would be too much. But it definitely sounds windy. Really fascinated by that area over there. I don't know if I could get there. It looks like it's really, really far away. Couldn't get there with the drone in time, probably. A couple spots off in the distance. Looks like it might be raining. Or maybe it's just the sun peeking through. I kind of wonder what the temperature is. We can find out. Let's see. Um, switch back to external. Back to internal. So up here is 53, so it's not too bad, actually. But, you know, the weather makes it a little hard to see anything. Maybe we can go above the clouds and see if there's a nice cloud field up there and some blue sky. Uh, it's hard to tell what your altitude is in the drone, but oh yeah, there we go. Wow. That is so pretty. I think I have the settings for clouds up to on ultra and it really looks like it. So here's the plane way down here, trekking along all the dials up right. And then us up in the clouds with our head up in the clouds. The sun. See if I could make that kind of cinematic looking. Try a different pose. It's beautiful. Hmm. I love the detail they put into the clouds. This little puff sticking up over here. It'll probably disappear by the time I get there. fading. That makes sense. That's what it would do in real life. Uh, you know, the this darkness in the clouds, I wonder if that's ambient occlusion. It makes sense it would be. It seems very realistic. Um, I don't think I've ever seen such dark gray clouds before in a game. Alright, let's go back and check on the plane. Speed is good. We're passing a airfield of some kind. Over. Altitude's good. Everything seems to be fine. We're on course. Probably have another 15 minutes or less of flying to do.
Alright, let's go back to the plane. Well, the weather has gotten really bad down here. I'm going to reset the view. Go inside. Can't really see much. Uh, for realism's sake, though, I would like to stay in here and remain for the rest of the flight. I can uh, pop up and kind of look around a little bit. Savannah and Charleston. take over for the rest of the flight. And my goal now is to slow down so we can land. So I'd like to get us below 150 pretty quickly if I can. I um, don't really want to lose much altitude. for to pull back on the throttle a little bit more, try to get our speed down. I'm going to pull up a bit, that'll slow us down. Get a little bit of headroom for entering the landing pattern. Okay, a little slower and I can put the flaps down. As a matter of fact, I should put the landing gear down. Landing gear. KH-401, contact Charleston approach on 119 decimal tree. 119 decimal tree, KH-401. Pull back a little bit more on the throttle. Charleston approach, KH-401, Trying to get down to that white line on the sweet ticker tape. Pull up a little bit to help with that. Okay, so we're in flap range. Let's go ahead and put the flaps down. And bring the throttle back up. going too much higher in altitude, so we want to kind of level off. Alright, got throttle at center. Uh, we're going a little slower than I would like typically at this point. Uh, if I level off though, I think we'll speed up a bit. Maybe I'll just give it a, some extra throttle just in case. Not too much, like I just did. 
Alright, yeah, that feels better. Co-pilot is about to contact the airport and get landing clearance. Charleston, approach KH-401. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. Thank you. Charleston, approach. Cleared through the Charlie airspace. Well, that's just the clearance for Charlie the airspace. airspace KH-401. Uh, in a minute, he'll contact them about the other. Charleston, approach Brickyard 3523. Is missed approach at Charleston. Charleston Tower KH-401 is 1-1 one, one miles southwest with Sierra to land. KH-401 Charleston Tower. Make 3 in runway 3. Altimeter 29.89 with 228 at 30. Just adjusted the barometer according to her instructions. Sky west 5, 3-3, 2 exit, runway when able. Fly straight in runway 3 KH-401. All right, let's see where we've got to land. So, over here in this direction. Always oh, seems like the pattern emerges past the point when I need to enter it. Um, I need to see if I can play with runway choice, and maybe I can pick one that makes a turn and makes it a little easier to enter it without passing up too much. Anyway, it's not a big deal to head over here and fold into the pattern. Somebody is stuck on the runway, I guess. I've definitely been there getting yelled at for being stuck on the runway by her. Alright, well, so this is feeling really good. Speed is good. Altitude's good. Flaps are down, landing gear is down. So, all we have to do now is just get in there, slow down a bit more. I'm going to hug the right side, which I do to try to keep centered on the runway. Looks like maybe some rain off on the, in the back, in the foreground, way off in the distance. Planes trying to land or taking off. We'll see, I guess. Continuing to have success with both hands on the stick during moments like this where you want the least amount of overcorrection. Sky West 533, two exit, runway when able. Okay, I want to go forward a little bit more before I keep turning. Just uh, give me a chance to better see where the landing pattern is heading. Charleston Tower, generic November 418, Echo Echo, 4 miles, southwest inbound for DME runway, tree approach. Generic November 418, Echo Echo, Charleston Tower. Clear DOR, DME, runway, tree approach. Altimeter 29.89, wind 228 at 30. I'm trying to turn sharply. I don't see the pattern anymore. I don't know if we passed it. There it is. Okay, we did kind of pass it, but that's okay. I can get right back into it. Getting some bumpy wind happening here. It's okay. The airplane's very sturdy. Perfect. We have clearance to land. Let's, uh... Get into this pattern. Runway tree, KH uh, I am going too fast. I'm going to drop the throttle for a moment here, and let's try to get the speed down. Whoa! Wow, that's a lot of bumpy wind.
I don't think it's anything I'm doing wrong. I think it's just the wind, but it you know makes me wonder if did I mess something up. This is a ch newly chosen plane, so I don't think any of my past you know any damage I might have done has lingered. Okay, we're still too fast. Let's uh, pull back on the throttle again and keep it down at the floor, at the bottom. I mean. It feels like it's just very dicey wind, but I think, you know, I'm confident that we'll be okay. Feels like our speed is good. I'll up throttle if I need to at the last minute to stay afloat. But the idea is going to be to try to hover over this runway as long as we can. Alright, so I'm gonna pull up. Let's try to hover, 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 hover. Oh, that was kind of rough. Nose wheel down. Uh, why am I going that direction? One Just like my rudder is not working. Okay, maybe because I was going too fast or it was wet ground or something. Yeah, that was kind of rough. Um, I think the plane was probably okay with it, but preferred would have preferred that to be a little smoother. Had a little bit of excess speed there at the end that I had trouble getting rid of. Alright, so we'll stop here and contact them for taxi to parking. Rickyard three five two three exit runaway when able. Charleston ground, KH-401, taxi to parking. KH-401, taxi to general aviation parking. Put the parking brake on, that's why it's beeping. Taxiing to general aviation parking via so taxiway golf, cross runway golf, Charlie, KH-401. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. Okay, I think I'm able to go now. I'm just magically banished. I had a couple of rough flights last weekend. I didn't realize how I'd kind of become m sort of muddle-headed. Um, you know, felt like kind of diminished capacity or something due to a bunch of really bad recent events, and it gave me a new respect for the number of hours you really need to put in to flying and t you really have to take it seriously and be able to tell if you're not in a position to fly. I tried to take this particular flight and a whole variety of things went wrong and I probably would have died if it was in real life. But then trying to fly my new um, Italian jet trainer over to um, the handcrafted uh, ATL airport, um, and that also was a disaster, um, various problems. So neither flight uh, survived being deleted. It just was not nothing I would want to publish. Um, but I forced myself to fly this weekend because I didn't want to get out of the habit. I have plenty of flights in progress to post, so I won't run out of things to post if I did take a break, but I want to keep this up. This one went well. The landing was rough, but landings are my biggest area of improvement, so that's not surprising, and I'll just keep up with that. Um, it was difficult a little bit dealing with the, you know, just how bumpy the side winds or whatever we were getting just seemed very, very bumpy.
taxing and steering and all that is kind of becoming um, second nature. One nice thing about the, f the jet trainer is when you're on the ground, you actually s are steering the front wheel to steer, not using the rudder, and it feels a lot more natural. It's very nice. One thing I've run into on the jet that I haven't run into in any other case is running out of fuel. I mean, I guess that thing it makes sense; it would burn fuel like crazy, but I'll, you know suddenly find the engines shut off and I'm wondering why and I look and I see I have zero percent fuel left so I'm gonna have to keep that in mind and when I apply that thing fill it up to hundred percent I would rather not turn on unlimited fuel because I'm trying to keep up the idea of making it realistic um, yeah, but I assume if I was going cross-country that I could easily land somewhere and then request fuel and keep going, so that wouldn't be a problem for a cost country trip. And I heard that the F-18, or F-15, I guess, uh, has been released. That's another jet fighter I'd like to fly. I'm sure that one goes super, super fast. The one I'm flying, I can get it up to about 350, and then um, the dial goes up to like 0.8 Mach, so I guess if you're doing a straight down nose dive or something, you could handle those high speeds. Um, it's the aerobatic version that I'm flying. I've tried flying the regular version and uh, I can't seem to get it off the ground, but one thing I didn't think to check at the time was fuel level. So it's possible that the non-aerobatic version uh, you know, doesn't come with any fuel. That might be why I can't get the engine started. Otherwise you'd think it would just fly. So not a great day here in Charleston. It's around 60 degrees. The local time is a little after 3 in the afternoon. Uh, so at least it's dry. You could actually, you know, have lunch outside. All right, so here's our spot. I think I'm good to park here. Parking brake on. Engines off. Let them go through their cool down cycle. Take the drone out and oh, the drone's way off somewhere in the clouds. Let's reset that. Oops. Uh, reset that and see what this area looks like a little bit while we wait for the plane to shut down. Alright, well it looks like just a default airport. It's probably not going to see very much. Um, I don't know, actually it looks kind of nice. Thank you, there. Yep, there it is. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.